Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Five Questions With. Last week, we had some amazing guests on the show, and boy, did we deep dive into their worlds. But here's the best part. We also uncovered their fun and playful sides. Our host, Scott Fullerton, has a treat for you today. You see, Five Questions isn't just about serious stuff. We like to keep it light and quirky, too. We ask questions that let our guests show their wonderfully unique and playful sides. Imagine this. What would they do if they woke up as a squirrel one day? Or what's their favorite ice cream flavor that describes their personality? It's all about bringing out their hidden quirks and having a blast along the way. We believe that even the most successful and accomplished individuals have a fun side and we're here to celebrate that. So get ready to witness the fun and playful side of our extraordinary guests. You'll laugh, you'll smile, and you might just discover a thing or two about them that you never knew. So sit back, grab a drink, and get ready for the show. All right, everyone, if it's Tuesday, it's time for another Five Questions With. Back in studio with me today, my very special guest, Mr. Levi Kreis is here. If you missed our interview last week, be sure to check the link below. We had a great conversation all about his ninth annual Christmas tour coming to a town near you. If you happen to be in one of the areas, you can't miss the show. Uh, we talked about all his great work in Town that he did a run up across the country this past year and a half. So many great things. Levi, welcome back to the show. How are you doing, my friend? Very good, Scott. How are you? I am great. Happy holidays to you and your hubby and family. Uh, so Thanks. great to have you back on the show. I love it. I love that we got a chance to to kind of talk about all things. All That was a good, yeah, that was, that was a fun time. Five questions. I'm going to ask a couple more things. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right. Question number one. We know you're a multi-hyphenate hyphenate entertainer. I mean, fantastic singer, fantastic on the boards of Broadway, great entertainer. You did a fantastic couple of podcasts. I want you and your hubby to throw a dinner party, and I want you to invite one of your favorite singer-songwriters, a Broadway entertainer, and someone from film or television industry. Who would you invite and why? <laughs> I love this. Okay, one of my favorite singer songwriters. I would probably have to have Paula Cole as a singer songwriter show up to watch how her conversation with Patti Lapone evolves. <laughs> and then I would probably need um, Matthew McConaughey there just to give a good Texas commentary on the fight that we're gonna see. <laughs> I love that. That's an amazing trio. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Assuming that they wouldn't get along. I don't know. They may be fine. But I kind of feel like that combination of fire might might be a lot for a room. <laughs> that would be a spicy dinner. I, I agree. Nice. Yeah. All right. Question number two. Yes. If you had a time machine, you could go back and witness any live concert in person. What would you like to go back to? Who would you want to see? Tina Turner's first tour as a solo artist. I like, so what was that private dancer? I believe so. Yeah. I think private dancer was the yeah. first released one. Yeah. I, th I think she put out a couple singles before. I that. would want to see her European. I would go to Europe and see one of the European dates of private dancer. That's what I would want to do. I, I've worked multiple jobs. One of my favorite jobs is working for Capitol records in LA and they would, uh, she was on their label. And twice a year, they would let you go to the recording studios in the basement of Capitol Records. And they put every album that was ever done on Capitol, EMI, Apple. And I would fill up my Tina Turner and Beatle things. I love Tina Turner. Oh, man. Amazing. What a star. All right. Question number three. Yes. We teased in our interview about this amazing new Broadway musical all about your life that you've been working on. Yes. Um, if you're you're a little far down the road now, who's your top three and contender to play Levi Christ if you're not allowed to play yourself? Oh, yeah. this question. Oh, my God. Well, um. <laughs> is it is it funny to say that between Jeremy Jordan and Aaron Tibbet, because for some reason we three always end up getting 
in this like contending for the same type of roles um but i won't i won't um i will say can i go back okay so can i combine the time machine with this conversation and go back because i want edward furlong to play that's an interesting choice i like that yeah nice but Good like choice. it like the late 90s 2000s edward furlong on in interview magazine brooding ish kind of yeah i was thinking aaron Tveit as well and i also uh -huh. i always um god i can't remember his name he was on madam secretary and was also in um broadway he was oh. in the four the four singers the Mm, not Million Dollar Quartet. What's the other one? Jersey, not Jersey Boys. Jersey Boys. He was in Jersey Boys. Oh, What's Eric. Um... Yes, Eric. Yeah. He'd be a good yeah. choice, too. Eric and Aaron, uh -huh. I think, would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. All right. And you know, obviously, you can't tease too much about it. But if you were able to give me a little tease, what can you tell me about the show-stopping number in the musical? Well, first of all, I will tell you, it looks like there's a good five show-stopping numbers in this thing. Yes. I have cranked out some big musical numbers that are exciting and fun, but the big teaser probably would be a song about something that people wouldn't necessarily expect that I got involved in in my past. There's a lot of secrets that I'll be told. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. Speaking of spicy, I think we're in for a little treat there. Okay. Oh, a lot of a treat. <laughs> nice. I love that. Yeah. All right, question number four, my friend. Yeah. You're about to head out on your holiday tour this season. Yeah. And of course, it's in the holiday season. So the ghost of bad Christmas songs past has come to haunt you. What is the song that gets caught in your earworm that you need to do a palate cleanser to get it out of your head? Oh, you're talking about like, like it really does succeed in getting in there and I hate it. Okay. I, cause I was going to say grandma got run over by a reindeer was one of those songs you heard growing up so much that you want to like murder someone when you have to deal with it. In right. Your ear. But like earworm wise though, mm, what's that Kelly Clarkson song that, that she like wrapped in red or something? You know, oh. that, like she has she has a single that was like the first single from that album that really like okay it probably happened for some people it never happened for me and i can't do that song i do not know why i think it just feels like it's trying to be a successfully doo-woppy influenced to mariah carey hit when it's not hitting it for me i just can't do it <laughs> i love that that's funny oh, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah. All right. And question number five. We okay. talked about your amazing ninth anniversary home for the holidays tour. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked about your traditions a little bit of what you and the family do for the holiday. If we could create a Levi Christ Day, how would we celebrate it? What would we be doing? <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. You would spend an, an entire day by yourself, quiet <laughs> and reading and not talking to a single soul. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I would enjoy those days, my friend. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. is Scorpio though, right? Oh my gosh. No I'm only charming and social because I'm an entertainer. I'm a Scorpio at heart. <laughs> <laughs> the truth I definitely need my privacy and my, yeah, I'm just a weird Scorpio. I am. I am. There That's you the go. Truth. Yeah. All right, Levi Christ, you made it through five questions. Woohoo! Yeah. Let all my wonderful listeners out there know where they can find your amazing website to find those tour dates of upcoming and hopefully get some tickets out there and find your music. Absolutely. That's LeviChrist.com. That's K R E I S. Think German. You got it, right? LeviChrist.com. There's all your social media link there. Or what's a good social media? At Levi Christ on Instagram, at Levi Christ on Facebook. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, Levi, great talk and good job on five questions. Stay on the line for me, guys. If it's Tuesday, it's always time for another five questions with. Have a great rest of your week. Look for two great new interviews this week on Thursday and Friday on the Leftist Rate Show. We'll talk to you then. Bye bye. All right, everyone. If it's Tuesday, it's time for another five questions with right here on the Leftist Straight Show. We're welcoming back into the studio Paul and Alicia Schneider are here. 
They are the producers and directors of of the fantastic new Christmas movie, A Holiday I Do. Guys, welcome back to Leftist Straight Show. How are we doing? Hi. Hey, good. Guys, fantastic movie. If you missed our link talking all about it, if you missed our conversation last week, check the link down below. You can uh, listen to our entire thing and find out where it's streaming. Uh, we'll put that at the end as well. Guys, you ready to play a little five questions today? So excited. Yeah, let's do it. All righty. Holiday edition. A couple of holiday ones strung through here, you guys, who are our very first kickoff of the Christmas season on Friday. So question number one, if you guys can create a fantasy Christmas dinner together with any four celebrities, living or past, who would you invite and what would be the main course? I'll let each pick two. Paul, pick two celebrities you'd like to invite to dinner. Wow. That is a... Uh... I'm just visualizing this 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 dinner. It sounds like a lot of fun. Um, Keanu Reeves for sure. Nice. And um, Jill Larson. Um, I would love to have her for uh, back to dinner. She was just such a a, a a light of a person to to get to know while on set. I love that co-star of the movie and uh, from all my children and so much amazing things. Good choice. Alicia, who would you invite? Uh, I'm going to do, since I only get two, I'm going to do two five for one deals and I'm going to do all the members of NSYNC and all the members of Backstreet Boys. <laughs> oh, there you go. That, that uh, you're playing to my audience there, girl. I'm telling you, good <laughs> job on that. Thank and you. What is your, what do you, what would you be serving? What's, what's for dinner? Uh, we're just ordering pizza because we're going to be spending the whole time dancing and talking anyway. We don't have time to cook. So we're just going to order nice. the best pizza in town and hang out. I love that. Fantastic. All right. Question number two. We're in the holiday season here. You guys are real life partners. Who is the best gift giver in real life? And what's an example of a memorable gift you got from the other? Uh, Paul is definitely the best gift giver. He actually just last week built me an entire room in the basement as a Christmas gift. Um, so it was for me and my girlfriend. He built us this room to just hang out in. And it has been the best Christmas gift ever. We're still working on it and getting it together. But Paul goes hard on gifts. I love it. A director and handy. I like that. I could barely <laughs> hold on to a hammer and nails. And what's the best gift you've received, Paul? You know, I'm I'm still a, a child at heart. If if I get a really complex uh, adult Lego set, I'm happy. Nice. Legos are all the rage now. I agree. Very, very cool. All right. Question number three. What's the weirdest holiday tradition you've ever experienced that you'd like to maybe incorporate into a Christmas movie? Oh, see, that's, that's a loaded question because Paul and I both grew up very, very Baptist. So we have <laughs> some very interesting Christmas traditions that I think we want to keep far away from our films. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know. I feel like I feel like we want to do things different. We want to start our own traditions. We want to do things that nobody has ever seen before. So I think we would probably sit down and just make something up. Maybe, I don't know, go UFO hunting on Christmas Eve or something crazy. That would be amazing. Paul, any ideas in the back of your head rolling around there? Well, like in, in the film, we had uh, an elf on the shelf, like you commented in our interview. And while our kids are maybe a little bit old for that, um, there's some really fun ideas when it comes to elf in the, on the shelf and just that you can do. So so maybe we missed the boat on that one, but uh, you're never too old to to start that kind of tradition, too. There you go. I like it. All right. Question number four, a little more work oriented. Um, during stressful moments on set, talk about what's your go to strategy to lighten the mood. I mean, your first time on set, Alicia, anything come up or was a little stressful that you how do you kind of deescalate the situation, at least in your own mind? I think it's important to keep people around who are funny and they can use humor in scary and tough situations. 
So we had a lot of people on set who would just break the awkward silences with jokes or um, turning on music at the right time. And then also we had Melinda, who was the writer. She also did all the food and she always came at the right time. Anytime things got tense, that's exactly when she would have a meal done. And that would kind of break up the tension, too. I got to tell you, I watched the movie. Um, I got the screener late last week. I had to make snickerdoodles this weekend because I just, I heard him mentioned in the movie so much. It's like, I love snickerdoodle cookies. So yeah, I hear you. And mm -hmm. Paul, what about you? What do you do to de-stress a tight situation on set? Yeah, I mean, I, it, it starts by, you know, hiring and collaborating with the right people. Because um, cause if you have the right people on set with the positive, can do anything mindset um, that alleviates some of those stressful moments from from coming up, um, but just to to take a step away and just take a, a breather, um, that was probably something that worked best for me um, in the stressful moments. I like that. Go outside in ten degrees, look up at all the stars, like we talked about in the interview. Good idea. Exactly. All right, question number five, guys. Uh, if you could swap lives for a day with any character from any Christmas movie ever, who would you like to swap lives with for a day? Oh, um, Christina Milian played a character in this super silly movie called Snow Globe, where she could pop in and out of this picture perfect Christmas town at any time. She just had to shake her snow globe and then she could just be in this picture perfect place. And I think that that would be nice in those stressful situations to just be able to pick up a snow globe and go to this perfect Christmas town where everybody's happy and everyone's, you know, ice skating and eating these big meals 24 uh, 7. <laughs> And what a fun plot device that is. I've even heard of that one. That's amazing. Paul, you what about you? I think um Will Farrell's elf. Just the mm. his childlike look at the world, carefreeness. That would be nice to to live in that for a day. I think you and I have the same childlike tendencies, Paul. I think we get along fine and <laughs> not get anything done. We just play all day in the playroom. That'd yeah. be so much fun. Well, guys, thanks so much for playing five questions. You made it through. Alicia, let all my listeners know again, uh, excuse me, the address for the movie so they can find your guys' production company and find where it's playing on Tello and uh, maybe follow along on social media. Yep, you can find all the links at aholidayido.com or you can follow us on Instagram at aholidayido. Super duper. Well, Paul and Alicia Schneider, thanks so much for being back on the Left of Straight show again. If you missed our interview, guys, check out the link below. We had a great talk all about A Holiday I Do, their brand new Christmas movie, now streaming on the Tello Network, which I absolutely love. If it's Tuesday, it's always time for another Five Questions With. We'll see you next week. Have a great holiday season, everyone. Bye-bye. All right, everyone, if it's Tuesday, it's time for another Five Questions With right here on the Left of Straight Show. I'm so excited to have back in studio with me. Derek Magyar's back, such a fantastic actor, director. He does it all. You can see him now in the hit series A Boy Culture Generation X based on the movie of the same, uh, streaming at your favorite streaming places, Deku, Amazon, all sorts of things. Derek, welcome back, my friend. Thanks for having me. Sorry, I have to let, let my cat out. I apologize. No problem. And my sweet little kitty. All right, I'm with you. That's all right. We talked in your Beautiful interview. Day. You have a full house full of I humans do. and <laughs> little and four legged I do. There, so. I do. Very, I do. Very yeah. busy. Well, we appreciate it. If you missed our interview last week, be sure to check it out. The link is down below. We talked all about boy culture and all of other Derek's fantastic projects he's worked on both in front of the camera and behind the scenes. You ready to play a little five questions, my friend? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Question number one. <clears throat> Excuse me. We talked about you being a new dad in your interview, a fantastic baby daughter. We know it's usually the moms that have the superpowers in raising kids. Have you <laughs> found yourself to have a superpower yet in this first month or so? And what superpower would you like to have in the future? I think that I I I, I would say that I'm – I have the ability to calm calm my daughter down when she's uh, when she's uh, malfunctioning or when she's having a full meltdown. Uh, it is certainly not an art uh, that I have perfected, 
but it is something that I feel that I, I have kind of naturally. And it's something that I hope to continue to uh, get better with because uh, it's certainly an important thing because uh, she really is expressive already. That's for sure. And I think having the ability to kind of uh, calm her down is something that I'm really uh, proud of. I love that. And question number two, speaking of your daughter, you're about to enter the world of Sesame Street and Thomas the Tank Engine and Powerpuff <laughs> Girls. Um, right. I think I read an interview where you didn't really watch too much TV growing up, but is there Correct. any project, a, a young people's project you'd like to bring to life for your daughter someday? Anything you'd like to either star in or get behind the camera on? God, um, I don't know the answer to that, to be honest. Um, you know, some of the things that I really grew up um, loving have already been made. You know, Mr. Rogers, obviously, is a show that I absolutely adore. Um, and that, you know, Tom Hanks did a great job. I thought the documentary was incredible. Um, that would probably be my my go to, um, because I just think that that is such a uh, intelligent, soft, well done show. Um, he was way ahead of his time. And I think that uh, that's that's something that that I I look forward to sharing with my daughter. Absolutely. Very true. Good answer. Well, let's talk about question number three. In Boy Culture Generation X, your character X is a little behind the times of technology and the culture of the old profession. <laughs> Right. What is some te technology now that you just can't live without? And what do you wish would just disappear? Oh, I can't live without my phone and I wish it would disappear. <laughs> Both. I got you. Same yeah. answer. Yeah. I understand that. No. Uh, it's glued to our hips way too much of the time. Oh, so you're right. God. Time, to, yeah. time to just enjoy that daughter time and put it in a drawer That's somewhere. That's right. That's right. Which I do enjoy. I do do that, but I can't, I can't, I don't know. I wouldn't know how to, how to function without it, which is so um, sad and scary, but uh, <laughs> I do make sure that I find times to just kind of put it away and be present. I think right now we're like, it's so easy to just be on a device all the time that we're just not interacting. And I think yeah. that interaction, human interaction is uh, priceless. There you go. I love that answer. Good answer. All right, question number four. You and your lovely wife are about to throw a dinner party, and you can invite mm -hmm. one actor, one director, and one entertainment oh mogul for the night. Who okay. would you want to bring there to maybe learn from or just talk to? Let's see. Um, that answer is going to be – that answer would change if you asked me every day. It would be a different <laughs> answer. Right. Um, I would say – I would say for a director, I would say the Softy Brothers. Nice. I would say for an actor, Daniel Day Lewis. Oof. I would say, what, who are the other people I get to have? That's Just good. an entertainment mogul you might want to learn from for your production company. Someone in the past that's. Um, I think um, like uh, Kathleen Kennedy, you know, someone like that. She's, you know, a wizard at what she does. Um, you know, she's she's a, an innovator, that's for sure. Um, so I would absolutely love to have have dinner and kind of pick her brain. And, and um, Dee Dee Gardner is another one, you know, who is at Plan B with Brad Pitt. She's, you know, incredible. Um and then uh, what was who else do I get to bring? That's it. You found three. Oh, that's my dinner table. That, that that's, a, that's a that's a that's a great three. Dinner party. It you would change you if you asked me again. It would change right now. But but <laughs> those are three people I would I would love to have Xavier Dolan there as well. Um, that would be another director that I'd love to to have there. Um, I'd love to have Denny Villeneuve there for dinner. I'd love to have Philip Seymour Hoffman, rest in peace, who I did get to. Oh. Spend yes. some time with before before he passed away. Um, we had a mutual acting uh, teacher and and um, person and connection, and I spent some time chatting with him actually 
as he was walking home from a performance of Long Day's Journey and Tonight. And he is just uh, one of the best at what he does. And, um, you know, so, yeah, the, the answer is always evolving. But uh, I stand behind those people. Those are some good invites, my friend. Just keep yeah. that table extending. I like it. I will. I, I, I hope to have a dinner like that sometime soon. There you go. All right. Question number five. We're sure. in the holiday season. I yes. know you lost your mother this year. I'm so sorry to hear that. But are there Thank any you. family traditions you, your mom and dad had that now you maybe want to pass down to your little girl? Yeah, I think, I think you know, um, my mother was the most important person in the world to me. Uh, now outside of my wife and my daughter, um, losing her was very, very difficult. Um, but the importance of uh, family tradition and holidays, I think were very important to her and they're very important to me. And I hope that that's something that I can pass down to my daughter. I think we, we always celebrated Thanksgiving, no matter whether it was a, a gathering of 25 people or just four of us or five of us, we always uh, were together. We always celebrated. Um, so I think just being together as a family over the holidays is, is a really special thing and something that I hope uh, you know, we will continue to do. We're already starting to do it. We haven't done it with, with, with our daughter yet, but my family is growing. My wife's family is quite big. And, you know, we had a, a big family Thanksgiving a year before last. It was COVID, but somehow we made it all happen. I think we were 30 people in Florida for Thanksgiving. And, wow. you know, we just, we just had a blast. And I think that it's, it's, there's so much love in the room and, and, and I'm really about that. And I love the cooking. My mom's cooking for Thanksgiving uh, was amazing. And uh, that's another thing that I really hope that I can pass down and I can recreate. This will be my first year doing it, recreating it without her. So uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'll let you know. Always tough. My mother is 84 yeah. years old. I kind of live with her uh, and take fantastic. care of her. And I, that's great. I hear you, my friend, but it's, yeah. it's I, I just, I, Envy you for that first father daughter making our pancakes or whatever we're going to do. That's going to be, yeah. she'll be looking down on you and smiling, I'm sure. Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Well, Derek Magier, thank you very much for coming back on the show, of guys. Course. Again, check out our full interview down below. Uh, Derek, let everyone know again where they can find you on social media and where they can find your amazing production company where you work with both your own um, acting and directing projects and with corporations as well. Sure. Uh, well, you can find me on, on in terms of social media. The best places are is going to be Instagram. It's at Derek Magyar for my own personal page at Skinny Lee Productions for my production page. And then both my website, Derek-Magyar.com and then Skinny Lee Productions.com for uh, my my company page. And you'll get to see a lot of kind of variety of work of things that I do in terms of content creation. And uh, my own website kind of is geared towards my work as a director, as well as my work as an actor. And then on Instagram, uh, I try to be very, very active in terms of listening to what people have to say and really communicating with my, my, my followers and, and my fans. Well, my friend, you're both an actor's actors and a fan's friend. So I appreciate you coming you on so the much. show. Of course. Stand along for me, guys. If it's Tuesday, we're always back with another Five Questions with. So we'll see you next Tuesday with our uh, guests we had last week. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe and uh, hit that little notification button. We'll see you next time. Have a great week, everyone. Happy holidays to everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Left of Straight Show. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast distributor and please give us a five-star rating so more listeners can find us. You can follow us on social media and be sure to check out our website, www.leftofstraightradio.com for contests and other news and information. See you next week.